Precisely. D don't you believe in spooks? No. Why don't... Oh! <laughs> I remember when Disney Plus first came out, I thought, no, fuck you, Disney. You're not going to get any more of my money. But then my friend told me that there's a show where Boba Fett hangs out with Yoda as a baby. And to sweeten the deal, he showed me this other movie. Call the pound. I already did, sir. The truck is waiting outside. Get out of my way! Actually, that dog doesn't look that bad. It's, see, that's the thing. That, that's it's a pretty, pretty good looking dog. You win again, Walt. After you're done watching every Marvel movie and the Deedles, you might be tempted to click on this movie. Look at him. We both know you're gonna click on this. Blank Check is a movie about money, but it's also a lesson why you can basically steal money from anyone and it's okay as long as they're kind of a jerk. This movie had a modest budget of about 13 million dollars, so Disney decided to bring in a director who had never directed a movie before but he did direct many successful music videos, such as MC Hammer, Turn This Mother Out, NWA's Straight Outta Compton, and of course, MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This. In fact, watching Blank Check is kind of like watching You Can't Touch This for an hour and a half. Our main character is Preston, who is unhappy having to share a room with his brothers and not have very much money really drives home the point that it sucks being poor your friends get to ride roller coasters and you get to ride an ostrich how can i save money if i don't have any a penny saved is a penny earned this is our main villain you don't look happy to see me quick quigley what do i do now that i'm quigley the opening scene shows him finding a briefcase of money which we're told multiple times that he stole, so you know he's bad. That single piece of info is meant to distort our morality, to believe that because he stole, it's okay to steal from him. After an honest accident where he hit Preston's bike, he ends up giving him a blank check in a hurry to cover all expenses. I think most people would nod their head at a reasonable level of extortion at this point. The dude is a dick. He clearly does bad things. Maybe take a couple hundred for like a really nice bike and have some extra on the side. But that's not enough for Preston. He goes for a full million. You see, children only know three numbers when it comes to amounts of money. Those amounts are one dollar, one hundred dollars, and a million dollars. Brian Bonsall from TV's Family Ties stars as a kid who accidentally comes into a million dollars. Preston goes to the bank to cash in his million, where we're first shown his love interest, who is a grown woman. You might think, oh, he's got like a little kid crush on her, like, it's not that weird. Until it is. I honestly thought that her casting was really just like a treat for all the dads who had to sit through a kid's movie. But things go from weird to am I supposed to call the police very quickly. The only problem is, she is the police. In fact, most of the adults in this movie just talk to Preston in a very suspicious way. Hey, Sonny. Cashing a big one today? Happy birthday. I'm here to blow out your candles. The owner of the bank is expecting one of Quigley's men to come pick up a million dollars the same day that Preston goes in to commit financial felonies. And the only way he checks to make sure that this is the person he's supposed to be giving a million dollars to is by saying the word Juice? No thanks, I'm not thirsty. And even though he said no, whatever. As soon as he has the money, he runs home and immediately buys a castle within five minutes of receiving the money. And he's able to complete the whole transaction over the course of one phone call. These are the actions of a Sigma child. Later, toads. The real juice comes in to pick up the money. 
Disney really wanted a well-rounded villain group with the mean guy, the fat guy, and the cool guy. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, twist. The majority of the movie we see Preston just spending all of his money as quickly as possible. And it feels like the movie does nothing to try to tell us that this isn't what you're supposed to do. There's supposed to be a lesson by the end of it that the money was never really important, but the only reason he finally changes his mind is only when he completely runs out of money. Not because he misses his family or anything. The bad guys finally catch up to Preston, and in the last five minutes of the movie, they try to become Home Alone. They even say right on the box, if you love Home Alone, you'll love blank check. Bitch, you're not home alone. What is this? What am I looking at here? The difference between this and home alone is that in blank check, he actually murders the villain. And when the cops show up to grab them all, they just arrest all of them. Even though Juice hasn't done anything. And take Mr. Wise Guy too. The percentage of Americans in the prison system is the prison system has doubled since 1985. The girl he has a crush on is actually an FBI agent who is trying to catch some kind of money laundering scheme or something and she needs to find out where Preston got the money which she does by going on a date with him and not talking about the money at all. There's all this cute flirting and intimate moments between the two of them that like are just getting creepier and creepier and I just you keep telling yourself like it's just a movie it's just like a little boy crush vibe, like it's not a big deal. And then at the end, she kisses him on the lips. Whoa, life is strange. This 30 year old woman kisses a child prepubescent. Secret Service, arrest her, make an example out of her. If we want equality, she needs to be in jail, booked. Well, it's just a movie. It's not like it's gonna have any effect on... Oh.